and they need to be cooled by pumping water through the reactor. Here, the shutdown system failed to function properly because electric power was lost. Workers attempted to cool the system using an emergency diesel power generator. But the generator suddenly shut down one hour later. The tsunami is said to be blamed. The safety device of last resort was then activated. Vapor generated by the temperature inside the reactor is cooled and condensed into liquid, which is in turn used to cool the reactor. But power officials judged that this system was not sufficient to continue to cool the reactor. Moreover, the level of coolant within the reactor also dropped until the fuel rods, which should be submerged, became exposed above the surface of the water. At this point, the fuel rods may have melted and been damaged. On Saturday afternoon, the building housing the reactor suddenly exploded. The walls fell down, injuring four people. <laughs> A nuclear and industrial safety agency official apologizes for not being able to provide any more information when asked if the situation is serious. He says they are gathering information. He is unable to respond when a reporter asks the public, says that the public is confused because of lack of information. Officials believe that the damage to the nuclear fuel rods has caused hydrogen to accumulate. Nearby residents are being bused to shelters provided by administrative officials. This woman says that people kept telling her that it was going to be okay, but then now she feels as if that wasn't the case. Previously, residents within a three-kilometer radius of the plant were evacuated, but others, including those living near the Fukushima No. 2 nuclear power plant, were told to follow suit as time went by. The next reactor to cause problems was the No. 3 reactor. Like the number one reactor, a hydrogen explosion occurred. At the time, falling water levels exposed few fuel rods, and officials had to pump in, into, into the reactor seawater. Eleven people were injured in the explosion. What happened at the number two reactor? Although air in the containment vessel had been released to lower the pressure, it nevertheless rose again, and the water levels kept dropping. As a result, seawater has been pumped into the reactor since late Monday afternoon. But the pumping stopped when the fuel ran out. Water <coughs> levels dropped rapidly. For 260 minutes, starting at half past six last night, all the fuel rods were exposed. <laughs> A nuclear and industrial safety agency official says they are preparing data and waiting for the facts to be confirmed. When pressed for details, he apologizes. He says the vapor within the containment vessel was not released fast enough. A questioner asks about reports saying that the water could not be pumped into the reactor. Official says that if the water was pumped in more quickly, the situation would have been different. Later, water began to be pumped into the reactor again, and at one point, water levels rose to a point where the rods were only half exposed. But experts believe that while the rods were exposed, it is highly likely that they could have melted and suffered damage. Late into the night, the pressure within the containment vessel rose. Pumping in water became impossible. The Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency official says the valve is now being opened. A reporter asks if it's not opened yet, and he answers that he doesn't know. He's then questioned about how dangerous this situation may be. He replies that, it, that should the situation remain as it is, the consequences will not be good. He says efforts are being made to increase the water levels as soon as possible. But the nuclear fuel rods are believed to have been exposed until this morning. Moreover, a nuclear and industrial safety agency official says they received notice from the Tokyo Electric Power Company that an explosion occurred at the number two reactor.
after this time. The explosion at 6.14 a.m. occurred near the pressure suppression pool, which addressed, adjusts the pressure in the reactor. Immediately after this, the radiation levels around the vicinity rose temporarily. Officials believe that a problem had arisen and that the reactor was unable to stop radiation from being released into the atmosphere. A TEPCO official apologizes for the anxiety and inconvenience this has caused. Radiation at the front gate of the plant compound as of 9 a.m. rose to a record high. The amount was 10 times the permissible level for an average person for a year. More trouble then occurred at the number 4 reactor, which had not been out operating when the earthquake struck. An explosion occurred at about 6 a.m. A fire broke out but was contained later. Edano says that a fire began in the number four reactor believed to be caused by a hydrogen explosion like the ones at the number one and three reactors. The explosion is believed to be a hydrogen explosion. This was caused when temperatures rose 